Hi, and welcome to City Desk, a behind the scenes look at Santa Barbara's top local news stories. I'm your host, Jerry Roberts, joined by an all star lineup of local journalists for an inside look at these headlines. Skyrocketing water bills loom in Santa Barbara. City College tries to tamp down neighborhood anger over expansion. And a 14 year old sets himself on fire. Can parents prevent risky teen behavior? And finally, a lightning round of panel takes on all the other news. Joining me tonight, Santa Barbara's favorite columnist, Starshine Rochelle. Kelsey Brueger, staff writer for the Santa Barbara Independent. And Nick Welsh, executive editor of the Independent. Thanks, you all for, thanks to all for being here. Uh, Nick, all those rain dances that your boss, Marianne Partridge, just had the staff doing up at her, uh, her ranch uh, have apparently failed to work. We're still in the drought this week. Um, but the city council took a step this week toward increasing water bills as a result. How much is my bill going to go up? Typical water bill is going to go up about $32. A month? A month. Uh, most of that is going to go for the new desal plant, which is supposed to come online next year. And that's going to cost about $42 million. It may be a little bit less, but you have to plan right now for the maximum uh, price and the maximum rate. If the, the state comes in with some loans, it might be a little bit less. But yeah, it's about a 30 bucks bump. So most <coughs> of it is going in the desal plant, but how do we know the desal plant's going to work? Isn't it just kind of a major white elephant? It may be a, a white elephant, but it's going to work. I mean, I, I don't think the technology is all that exotic. People have been using it for a long time. Uh, the companies that have, are submitting bids have experience doing it. It's just intense. Uh, it's intensely expensive. It uses a ton of energy, uh, and it's very. And the water it produces is going to be very expensive. It'll, so, it'll produce about. It's going to be forty-two million bucks just to get it up and running again. And then it's going to be about five million bucks a year for the water that it produces. And that's all paid out of water bills? That's all out of water bill. And how much of our need for water or, or the net amount of water that we need is it going to cover? Uh, you know, a typical year we use about 15,000 acre feet of water, 14,000. This is going to produce about 3,150. So a pretty good chunk. So your water bill is going to go up 32 dollars a month. Do the math. That's uh, yeah, I $384. Did. Yeah. So that's Are a there, lot of lattes. Huh? That is that's a lot of lattes. Are there other communities in California who use the desal plant? Uh, that you know of? Yeah, actually, um, Orange County uh, has, um, Carlsbad I think has one, uh, mm. Huntington Beach has got another one kind of on the way. Mm. Um, okay, I want to say Morro Bay, it's not, but it's up in that neighborhood. They actually have a desal plant. Um, but not too many. Where is ours? Uh, it's actually um, right down by the wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the most interesting argument uh, at the city council where they tentatively approved this um, was the avocado ranchers. And so what we have is this big green belt, not a big green belt, but we have a significant green belt of avocado trees. And during the last rain of fires that we had, they helped slow down uh, the fires and they were a nice buffer wall. So their water rates are, are the lowest, they're still the lowest, they get the cheapest rates, but they, they showed up and they said, hey, this is going to put us out of business. As low as it may look to you, it's killing us. And they brought in big guns from the avocado lobby to come in and say, this is an outrage. Um, but uh, the, for reasons of Prop 218, which are too arcane to go into right now. Proposition 218, 18, which, yeah. as everyone knows, does what? And it basically says that if you're going to increase the water rates, or any kind of rates, you can only increase it by the cost involved. And so you can't give people subsidized water anymore. You have to charge them for the cost, and you can't give them a break on the cost. Hmm. You eat a lot of avocados, you eat guacamole? I do. How much is a guacamole going to go up per bowl? <laughs> I have about five dollars a bowl. It's going to be an outrage. Really? No. no it's you not. think that much? No. I mean, really, when you think about it, I mean, I, you know, I should know this number off the top of the head. I don't. Um, it's a big number to go up. I mean, that's you know, that's a significant amount of money. And you know, for um, a lot of people, it's going to it's going to hurt. There's no doubt. But when you look at what a lot of people spend for water already, it's going to be an ouch, but it's not going to be a killer. And what about the uh, controversy over the municipal golf course? Are they, are they, are they, are they, no, but golf courses use a huge amount of water. Yeah. You know, actually, in, in the last drought, um, 
It, it was great. You know, they, they were really... Um, they're going to let that, you know, just... They're going to let all of it go. Um, they can't let the greens go. They can let the fairway go. But they, the greens, they have to take care of. Or, or the area... I don't really know much about golf, but they're going to... <laughs> they're going to... <laughs> they're they're going to have to let a lot of that go. But I'm that's not what the controversy was about. Well, well it's a con the controversy is about whether we should have a golf course. Well, the, the con no, actually, that's Ernie Solomon's controversy. And, and the thing is, golf, people are playing less golf. People are playing less tennis. And so you have this huge golf course that was built in the 50s, and it was sort of a, a testament to all of a sudden Santa Barbara actually has a middle class. For the first time we had a middle class, we had all these defense contractors come to town, UCSB, and they wanted to play golf. We had a mini golf course. But now those people are old, their kids are old, and they're not playing golf. And, and their kids aren't playing golf as much. So the number of rounds went from about 100,000 rounds a year to 62,000 rounds a year. You know, maybe it's the Tiger Woods effect. People but it doesn't have anything to do with water? It doesn't have anything to do with the, with the water? No. No, no, actually, the controversy over the, this is a union, non-union. Do you farm out um, ten jobs that are currently city employees, or do you privatize them? And so the, the, the golf course is losing money. It's zipping into the reserves. So in order to save some money, two hundred to four hundred thousand bucks a year, um, they're essentially tossing these guys overboard. There's ten of these employees. Eight of them are probably going to retire soon anyway. And so it's really your typical privatization, union jobs or not union jobs. Nothing to do with water. Well, just to get back to water. For Let's talk about water. Okay. So how much is it? So it's $240 million to get it up and running. How much does it cost a year? And, and how does the whole it's, thing... It costs $42 million to get it up. $42 million. And then it's $5 million a year. But this is a thing that's really interesting. For the first time ever, Lake Kachuma, another water source, where about half the water for everybody on the South Coast comes from, for the first time since it's ever been operating, um, they put out the notice there will be zero water available next year. You ain't getting a drop. No more water. Hasn't happened. That's a big sort of drop dead exclamation point in the water discussion uh, this week. And so I think that fact um, plays a lot in the decision, do we hold off on the desal plan or not? There's no holding off. And this is it. Isn't the desal is bad for the fishies too. Desal sucks the fishes. Yeah. Okay. All right, Kelly. Uh, Kelly. Kelsey. Um, what's the crux of the issue about what's going on with City College? There seem to be a lot of uh, bad blood going on since uh, Proposition S got defeated uh, last, right. last fall. Right. Right. I mean, and that's exactly it. It's. I think that the issue is. The crux of it is that these out-of-towners have been attending Santa Barbara City College for a while, and that didn't, you know, just happen overnight. But when the college, you know, asked the community for two hundred and eighty-eight million dollars, um, a lot of these issues that have been maybe festering for some time um, were were in the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, so a lot, it's, it's kind of hard to, to talk about numbers because a lot of numbers get thrown around and, it's, and, you, and a lot of times people aren't necessarily talking about apples to apples. But one way to look at it is if you look at last year, the unduplicated headcount for City College was just over 30,000. Um, and 30,000 30, 30, students taking some course or Some another. course, right. Uh, Non-credit credit. credit. Um, of those, about 11,000 were from out of district out of state or out of country. Hmm. So basically anyone not from the South Coast. Um, so what city college administrators will say is, you know, state law um, requires them to admit any in-state resident, California resident. Um, so what that leaves you with is about 3,000 out of state um, international student um, who's, who, you know, that they would basically be able to, um, you know, restrict enrollment in those areas. Um, but, but, but the college gets a lot more money for that, right, right, exactly. So they get about $5,000 more per student, um, which, you know, translates to millions of dollars. Um, and when you ask the college, you know, have you ever considered, because it would be just a board change. The board would be able to say, um, right now we have 6% of our enrollment um, is, in, is international students. Let's put half of that. Let's do 3%. You know, they could do that easily. Um, but they, they're able to have a lot more courses that, you know, they maybe, they, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be able to have if they didn't. So that's what they say, um, you know, and I think, again, you know, Measure S, um, you know, wasn't necessarily about housing, but it did bring all these issues up. Um, so. And, and what is, 
the college and Lori Gaskin, the, the, the head of the college. What, what, what is yeah. her master plan for world domination? <laughs> what is she going to do? Well, you know, she's had a, a series of these neighborhood task force meetings um, that started, I believe, last October. So they've been, um, you know, a robust series of meetings. Nick went to quite a few of them. Um, and, you know, they were able to do, it, it seemed like a lot of work to look at, you know, what are the issues here? You know, how, what are some short-term fixes? What, what could we do as far as these neighborhood concerns of all these students living, you know, in these surrounding neighborhoods? Um, a couple of things that they come up, came up with what they're going to do or look into doing is, um, one is to implement this noise ordinance, similar to one that they have up in SLO. Um, because right now, as the noise ordinance in the city stands, it's actually pretty interesting. Um, if you, if your neighbor's having a party um, and it's really loud and you call the cops and the cops show up, you have to basically perform a citizen's arrest to do anything because mm. you can't disturb the peace of a police officer. Mm. So the police officer can't say, you're serving my peace um, and then ticket you. So really? I never knew that. Did you know not, that? Not, a, not as the city ordinance stands, yeah. So, you know, if you're, you're not going to, I mean, not very many people are performing citizens arrest on their college neighbors. I mean, that would be a little bit ridiculous. I think they probably fear uh, retaliation mm -hmm. and, you know, they just don't want to. Um, so what you have is all these students who are just af not afraid of the cops. The cops show up and the cops just feel like this is a waste of their time. It's, you know, it's just not a good situation all around. So one thing that they, they did mm -hmm. up in slow because they had a similar problem. So up in slow, they implemented this noise ordinance. Um, which basically, if, if music is playing, if you can hear it, I think it's um, any level after 10 p.m. or if you're 50 feet away from the property and you can hear it, then you get like pretty significant tickets, but it, it brings it down to a, uh, like basically a parking ticket, like a really expensive parking ticket. This is in San Luis? San Luis Obispo. It didn't stop the house it didn't, collapse for it didn't St. Freddy's Day. For, for St. Freddy's <laughs> Day, which is interesting because that was that's happened at 6 a.m., oh right? Oh, my gosh. So that's kind of how they... What was this? So uh, there was a giant party um, at one of the fraternity houses in San Luis last week. Uh, thousands of people were there. There were people up on the roof. The roof collapsed. A bunch of people were hurt. Oh. Somebody's leg got impaled by yeah. like, a piece of it the was, wall. It was scary. I mean, they're lucky that it wasn't worse. Were you Honestly, there? I wasn't. You weren't there? I, my sister goes too slow. Okay. So, <laughs> was yeah. she there? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> don't, I don't ask, know. don't tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that I don't know. But, um, yeah, so it, it's interesting. And, and I think one thing that's interesting about that is that um, that ordinance, they're, they're kind of talking about now being able to just implement that ordinance at any time. Mm -hmm. So that happened at 6 a.m., you know, the police chief could essentially turn it on. Um, so <laughs> I think that's something they're discussing. But how, um, how much of the concern of the neighbors is about behavior and how much is it about rents? And, and about rents? I mean, I, th think it's, I think it's both. I mean, I think that, you know, you have loud partying. No one wants to live next door to loud partying. And this is on a Thursday night. You know, that's another issue they're talking about is having Friday and Saturday classes because right now the, the campus is virtually empty on Fridays. Right. So you have a bunch of kids partying because it's Friday, it's Thursday night and it's the weekend. Um, and so, you know, I think that that is an issue. And then I think, you know, it, the rents, you know, if you're a student, you know, the, and you can have student housing, which used to be, um, just housing for families, you know, you all of a sudden you can put three people in a bedroom who are willing to pay seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars a month um, to share a room with two other people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can have a kitchen and some donuts, and then you have breakfast, basically. You know what I mean? So it's easy to create these unsanctioned dormitories. Um, so I think that happens, and it's it's profitable for people who are doing it. Um, and so it's 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 both, I think. And then you have the landlords targeting. Um Swedish students, uh, Germans, and, and a lot of the out-of-country students mm -hmm. because their parents can pay more. Mm -hmm. And they're coming to the United States in part for the education, but also because the Riviera-type, you know, ambience. Mm -hmm. And so, like, for example, my daughter had lived in one of the bigger housing projects that just got bought out by Ed St. George, you know, the highest real estate price deal in, in rental housing in Santa Barbara history. And they've just moved in, you know, it's pretty much all foreign students now. And so that goes to some of the sense of, you know, displacement and some of the hostility that we're hearing towards out-of-towners. But that's not new. I mean, I have, a, my, I have a student who's looking at colleges and this whole concern about 
all universities, you know, the UC system and everybody <coughs> admitting a higher percentage of people from outside the country or at least outside the state because they get way more tuition that way. Right. And is that fair when we're the ones that pay taxes? It's not unique to City College. It's sort of rampant right now. Right, right. No, it definitely. And it's, I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, if you're a student and you're going to, and you're going to City College, are you okay with more students, uh, international students mm -hmm. who are paying more? Or do you want to pay more? Right. I mean, I think that that, you know. Right. I don't know. I mean, I think that, you know, the bite is for people in the neighborhoods, the families in the neighborhood who aren't in, involved in the city college reality, mm -hmm. they're just, you know, typically uh, they're low-income neighborhoods around there, um, and their rents are going up and they're being priced out of the neighborhood, or you're up in the Mesa and all of a sudden you've got, you know, Party Central right next door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on, on it. Um, Starshine, there was a terrible story this week about, which I think Tyler Hayden reported on, among others, mm -hmm. but a 14 year old boy who intentionally set himself on fire for something called the fire challenge. What, is, the is that a thing? The fire challenge what is, is that? a thing. Apparently it's a thing. So the fire challenge joins a list of other sort of macho teenage challenges that have been making the rounds uh, on YouTube with people. There was the hot pepper challenge where people would eat the ghost pepper and vomit and sweat and shake and see if they could survive. Um, there was the cinnamon challenge where somebody would dare you to swallow a bunch of dry cinnamon, which sounds not so terrible, but it actually turns out to be really bad. Um, people were getting sick and, you know, inhaling it in their lungs and ending up in the ER. But this one is the worst I've heard it's so far. It's kind of beyond the pale, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, beyond. So the fire challenge apparently is where, um, you know, some teenager, and surprise, surprise, it tends to be boys, um, squirt What's lighter fluid, <laughs> squirt lighter fluid on themselves, and then light a match or a lighter and set fire to their body, some part, sometimes a hand or a torso or something, and then theoretically quickly douse it with a shower or a pool or something like that. But apparently it went awry um, in Santa Barbara last week and there was a 14-year-old boy who was engulfed by flames and smoke on his way to the pool and fell down burning and is now, um, I mean, the last news report I saw was, you know, clinging to life and in agony with burns all over his body and it's really really, really sad and scary. Why, why, I'm just curious, I mean, why would somebody think that's a good idea? I have no idea. I've never been a teenage boy, but. But you, um, you know teenage boys. I have, yeah, yeah, I have one. I know some teenage he, boys. He's not doing the fire job. No, not, not uh, we had a little talk about it. <laughs> he, hasn't, uh, he hasn't been inclined to do it so far. Um, I don't know why they do that. You tell me, you're, you were a teenage boy. What, what would make you want to do something I mean, like that? I wouldn't, I don't, I don't think I would do that. We used to steal gasoline from like the, the school buses. Mm -hmm. We'd go at night. Siphon? Yeah, siphon mm -hmm. the gas and put it in our car, but we never put it on That's ourselves. That's just thrifty. That's just economical. No, I know. I know. <laughs> That's good sense. A, I, I'm pretty sure the statute of limitations. So how much right. gasoline do they actually put on? Or I'm not sure. It? I'm not sure how much it is. I, we, there were, there's videos you can watch, but I stopped there. I was like, is there a video of this? There's, there's, there's no. I don't know. Mm. Wow. I don't know. So this, is, this will be, ISIS will say, we can't possibly top this. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, when you say it's a thing, um, you know, I, I, I've read this, I've heard this, but how much of a thing is it? I don't know. I just did some looking around myself. As I said, I found some videos and, and news reports. There was something on Huffington Post, and you know, there's certainly videos you can watch if you are interested in that sort of thing. I'm not. I decided I didn't want to see it, but um, I mean, the thing, the natural reaction I noticed in comments on the Indie and everywhere is that you know, people tend to want to do the like. Darwin joke about, you know, oh, well, you know, that's a dumb thing to do. And, um, and I, you know, no one likes making fun of people more than me. Um, but <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a hobby. But um, the thing is, it's, it's hard to do that when it's a, it's a child. I mean, it's a 14 year old, but I think we can all agree that 14 year olds can be some of the most childish people around. Mm -hmm. And it's also in our community, it's not far away. And this is someone who's suffering. And um, well, where, where is he? Clean. He's he's in Los Angeles at uh, I believe USC Hospital, yeah. And there's a, a page that's set up for him, or there is. There's a fund me page. I don't know what the address of that is, though. Mm -hmm. Do you know? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't be, I, well, we I, we don't know the kid's name. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, 
I'm not sure. I think the independent yeah. might have it we, yeah. in the story there. Yeah. All right, so call, call Nick at home. Call me at home. He'll be glad to <laughs> help you with yeah. that. We'll hear your phone number. All right, so the same, and then, and then we also read a story about the party bus, which the was party a, bus. <laughs> which was uh, apparently a, a Santa Barbara High School student, a girl, okay, that's so we're, we're, we're yeah, yeah, good. She 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 rented the bus uh, with her mother's credit card. Indeed, un she unclear did. whether mom knew about that or not, and then invited all eighty of her best friends to <laughs> get on the bus in the school grounds. And, yes. and for some reason, the cops showed up, and then. Dave right. Cash's, the, the, the superintendent's head exploded about this. Apparently so, so yeah. yes. What's, it's a story so on News is this, is this the same thing? Is this the same I don't think level? so. I mean, to me, I don't even know what the story is there. I can't figure out why why we're even talking about it, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I, I don't... That's a hell of a time to say that. Huh? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I just mean why the community is up in arms about it. I mean, Teenagers are drinking and smoking pot. That's not shocking. That's that's almost. I mean, it's a given. And um, the fact that they're not driving while they're doing it to me is shows some measure of responsibility. I'm going to have to assume they stole a credit card to do it, which is not something I'd recommend <laughs> personally. But um, I think it's just the fact that they were doing it on school grounds, which you know, if if you could argue that it's smart to uh, arrange other transportation if you're going to imbibe, which I'm not recommending, but if you could argue that that's wise, I think it's incredibly stupid to meet your friends on your school campus Perhaps to do this sort of thing, right? <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're the only person that's been in high school in the last four decades <laughs> at the table. Did you, did, you go on, did you have party bus? Did you go on the party bus? You know, we didn't have, see, the, for me, what's interesting is that this is a private company. Um, yeah. You know, when, when I went to, you know, prom night or, uh, you know, I, I don't even know what it's called, senior night maybe, it would be like a big bus, so it would be a school bus, and you know everyone piled on, and it was sort of understood that a lot of people were drunk or high, and you know it wasn't sanctioned. It wasn't like this is totally okay. Well, who but, was getting the bus? Who who but, was contracting to get the bus? Was it the was it the school? Yeah, but it was it was you know through the school, and you know it wasn't it wasn't at all permitted that you know you were allowed to be drinking or high at all. But you know people you had to were do it secretly, right? Right, and people did it secretly. As God not intended. Me, but no, I'm sure right. not. No, 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 no. And and what did, and but you what did you have in your Gatorade bottle? What, what, you, well, that was that, that was always the joke. That was the joke. You know, it would be like if you have Gatorade, you can drink it, right? But the teacher you know, would say this? Well, wink, no. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, Chaperons. I don't know if it was actually a teacher, but... Parents. So I think the... I mean, the thing is, is that, yeah, exactly. Kids have been drinking and getting high for a long time. Um, so, you know... This group is particularly young, though. I think they were... Weren't they... Would they say, like, 12 to 14, 13? This is a news hawk like that. story, yeah, that, they, yeah. that they've been... Uh, yeah. Reporting on. So my favorite thing about the whole thing was just um, the parents who told Cash, uh, you know what, mind your own business. This is not your business. How dare you sort of censure my child on your property? That <laughs> was very strange. So these are to parents me. who have enough money that their <laughs> child can take a credit card yeah. and you know without them noticing. Yeah. So what happened to the what happened to the students? I don't know. We'll, we'll have were to wait and see on the third story of this non-story. <laughs> I can't wait. And what about the bus driver? What happened to him? Well, that's the question. Because the cops, I mean, it wasn't just like Dave Cash showed up, right? I mean, no, the and there was a lot. The cops were there. There was a lot of stuff on the bus. There was, I mean, the funniest mention to me was like the last thing on the list was and red solo cups. Like, do you know what that, you know what that <laughs> means? Um, but there was, you know, there was, there was drug, there was drug paraphernalia, there was different kinds of hard alcohol. Um, and so my concern is who, you know, the, bu the bus company, to what extent are they liable for something like this? And why on earth would anyone approve that, even if you didn't know because they called the credit card in? And then when you get there and you see, you know, 60, 14-year-olds, who's going to be like, mm -hmm. hey, where's the adult here? Do you think mm -hmm. they were carding them to see if... Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I do fake. not think that. <laughs> they, all, they all had fake ID. All right, well, thank, <laughs> thank you for that. Sure. All right, now this is our, uh, this is our lightning round where we kind of go around just real quickly and try to touch on some other issues. What's, what's the latest with uh, district elections? Uh, district election, I think tomorrow, Cruzito Cruz, the great invisible man, is going to show up at uh, court uh, to challenge 
uh, the fact that he's he's one of the plaintiffs right. in the case. He's, a, mentioned he's yeah. the one plaintiff who is opposing it. And I think she has a court date tomorrow to say why he shouldn't be fired by his attorney and the, the rest of his fellow plaintiffs. Um, he is opposing it. Not exactly clear why. Um, he is saying that he didn't know that there was a hearing uh, two weeks ago to have him fired from the case by his attorney. But I was at that trial two weeks ago. Cruzito was outside the courtroom. He says hello to his, no, his attorney says hello to him. He kept walking. I tried to talk to him. He kept walking. So he obviously knew something was happening. But aren't there some maps due already? Yeah, the maps are coming. Yeah, deadline? Cruzito is really a sideline. Really, it's a done deal. So it, they have to wait until August 6th for the whole deal to be done. But the, the deadline to turn the maps in, I think, is tomorrow. And so. They hired this company that um, produced two maps, no, actually three maps, of how the districts could shake out. And, and the rule basically is there's six districts, two of them have to be uh, majority-minority. So uh, a majority of the uh, voters have to be uh, Latino in these two districts. And I think, um, so that's, that's how it starts. So it's the east side and the west side, and then everybody figures out the maps. Tomorrow's the deadline for the Tomorrow, public. And we're, we're, we're here on Thursday, March 12th. Okay, so, so the, Friday today. Friday the 13th. Um, will be the day where you have to turn it in. Okay, all right. And you've been working on a story that uh, we'll hear about next week, maybe, um, about the Ivy the Ivy self-governance, self -governance. Self -governance. yeah. That's, What's it's going a, on with that? It's a developing story. Um, so basically, Assemblymember Doss Williams has crafted um, special legislation or legislation AB3 um, to create a special district in Isla Vista, which um, would be sort of a watered down city, um, you know, not, not be able to be as powerful as a city, wouldn't have its own police department or a city attorney, but would be able to have additional services and could augment services that are already there. Enhanced community policing, for instance. Um, so at this point, um, March 16th, I believe, is the date that there has to be some sort of language attached to the bill, um, which has been sort of the issue all along because, um, you know, for typically LAFCO um, implements these um, special districts, community districts. That's what Cal LAFCO set up, LAFCOs all across the state specifically to do this. Um, and this legislation. Um, essentially bypasses LAFCO. So LAFCO is not too happy about it. Um, they sent a letter of concern, um, you know, saying that they're All right. we're, unsure. We've got to hold it there because we're, oh, okay. we're running out of time. Yeah. You're, you're going to send your t teenage son to Isla Vista? To Isla Vista. No. 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 All right. Well, that, uh, we're out of time. Uh, thank you to um, my guests tonight, Starshine mm -hmm. Rochelle, uh, Nick Welsh, and Kelsey Brueger uh, for being here. And thank you all for watching. If you have comments, questions, or suggestions, email uh, us at sbcitydesk at gmail.com or check us out on Facebook. Thanks again for watching. We'll be back with a new show. <laughs>